This episode of Sewing Out Loud is brought to you by the Made to Measure Leggings class from SewHere.com. This online class brings ZD right into your sewing room to show you how to measure, draft, and construct a pair of leggings based on your personal measurements. Go to SewHere.com slash leggings to find out more and get access to all the videos and course materials immediately. That's SewHere.com slash leggings. Welcome to Sewing Out Loud, the official podcast of ZD Sewing Studio. Here are your hosts, ZD and Mallory. Sewing Out Loud. Hello, and welcome to the podcast. I'm Mallory Donahue. And I'm ZD Donahue. And we are recording our episode on how to clean your serger now. <laughs> From the serger sanctum. That's right. Um, wonder if this one will be an hour long we'll see we're like i think i think that i bad. could live with one sewing machine if i had like 42 sergers i'd be happy oh okay yeah, mm-hmm. I, yeah like I like sergers too this is sergers this is a serger time of my life a serger season yes a my serger season, serger of my season. Life. i have been i feel like actually using the sewing machine a little bit more than normal with with costuming this show yeah, it comes and goes like that, yeah, doesn't like, it? Oh, I gotta yeah. make a bunch of... I know, when I make dog beds, I use the sewing machine a lot. Oh, do you? Yeah. Okay, yeah. all right. Well, uh... I don't make garments, I make dog beds. <laughs> there we go. So, when um, when we started off our episode about why to clean your sewing machine, or how to clean your sewing how machine, to clean we, your start, sewing machine. we right. started off with the why, you know. Yes, we did. Um, And why to clean your serger, I think... It's very similar. Because your serger just makes dust. It's so dirty. I mean, if if you, like, just got a serger or you're new to the sewing game, like it's a hobby you've picked up recently or something like that, just be prepared for all because of all the mess. You, I mean, you're, 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 you're cutting. You're <laughs> yes. just cutting, cutting, cutting. And you're using four spools of thread. You know, I mean, no matter how good your thread is, there's still going to be there's some lint, lint coming yeah. off of it. Sometimes yeah. you only use three spools, right, Mom? Well, Don't, a lot of right. times for me. Okay. Yeah. Uh-huh. But, you know, <laughs> you, you also have your combo machine, your okay. serger overlock. So you get the lint, you get the the cutting, you get the scraps and the lint from the cutting, but you also get serger tails. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. My bedroom is kind of adjacent to the sewing studio, sort of. And then I have stairs in my house that have carpet on them. And you know what, like, is the most visible debris on on those in my bedroom and in my carpeted stairs are black serger tails. Yeah, like, and I, it's only the black ones. I swear <laughs> the other ones fi- don't don't. Okay, crawl. and I'm like, and they look like spiders. And I'm like, I didn't even make anything with black serger thread, and I am somehow tracking them back to my house. As I- as I yep. am doing this, so yes. Um, I would say cleaning the serger is almost more like important to your whole environment. Yes, than, yes, absolutely. Than I the mean, sewing machine. I mean, is a the amount bit. of lint it makes. You know, your 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 computers at risk. That, right. <laughs> yeah, you know, your other sewing machines at risk. Yes, your furniture surface. Oh, listen, you can sew on velvet on a serger and then blow your nose oh, an hour God. later, and yes. it's whatever color the velvet was. Yes. No, you maybe you need a mask. Right. Yeah, absolutely. So, so yes, uh, cleaning your serger will keep your environment cleaner as well. Like far-reaching, right. far-reaching When my husband built this studio, he said, maybe we should have an air laminar airflow system that keeps all the, you know, because he, all the lint. Yeah. Just sewing makes in general. Right, yeah. right. So, yes. And, and you'll see people in garment factories where lots of stuff's getting cut and sewn right. and stuff, like wearing masks. Yes, you know, absolutely. Uh, completely reasonable. So we're not we're not quite there yet. But um, so cleaning your serger. Sergers, I think, I know there are sergers that have, like, computer displays. It's not a computerized machine. Right. But it does have a computer. All it tells you mm-hmm. is... You, you select a stitch, and then it tells you what settings to do. That's right. So it's not truly a computerized machine. That machine would run without that display. If that yes. display broke or something, it would still run. Okay, now I haven't seen a lot of those lately. 
Like, I haven't either. Yeah, I, I, I really haven't seen. I don't. I don't know if that was sort of a fad when the machines started having screens. Well, like you, know you what said, I mean? it's not absolutely necessary. You know, right? So, like our surgeries, you know, they don't have screens. They're fully mechanical. You know, they're they are. I am unaware <laughs> of any electronic, truly computerized. Right. Yeah. Yes. Okay, so you turn it on, it works. Turn I'm it off also and totally unaware of a. Surgery with what they call a true decorative stitch, just so y'all know. Well, yeah, that's another. Because I have seen people talk about that, like, in sewing publications. Yes. Just so you know. I think okay. we've, that's like the, you have a bobbin case of this episode. That's right. <laughs> ZD's pet peeves. <laughs> okay. Um, that has been explored in a different episode, yes. too. Okay. So thanks for bringing it I up I don't know. Here. But good. I got to let Great. people know. Great. I want them informed. Great. I want them to know. I want them to know. So before you, when you're going to clean your serger, okay, you need to unthread it. Like you were going to unthread. Unplug it. Unplug it. Well, first got to unthread it. Well, in it's a way, to how do you unthread your... Well, that's un- what I was going to oh. ask you oh, before how, you okay, interrupted ask me. me. Ask me. Ask me. Okay. When you're going to clean your serger, you got to unthread it. Uh-huh. How do you unthread your serger? Well, ZD? you clip... <laughs> Right before yeah. your first, between your between your cone, your your thread, uh-huh. and your first thread guide, thread guide, yeah, or ten on our, on ours, it's also like a tension. It's guide. like a pre tensioner. Yeah. Uh huh. Okay. And if you don't get it clipped in there, you have problems, right? Who was that? Who was that? Who got there? I don't like, know. You all told me to buy a baby lock, and it doesn't <laughs> work. And we were like, Oh no, it, it's gonna work. We'll help you. And we did. We helped yeah. her, and she didn't have it clipped. And then in. she told us we were marvelous. Yeah, she but was anyway. like, Thank you. <laughs> um. Then you you grab a hold of the tail that has probably been formed uh-huh. or the or the thread ends, right, that are under the presser foot of the serger, and you hold on to them with a slight tension and you run your machine. Yeah, that's why you don't unplug it beforehand, that's right? Right. right. Yeah. <laughs> now, you could do that. You could yes. pull them through if you had your foot up and all the tensions released. But this is probably the most efficient way. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So so that's the easiest. And it's what we do when we're going to change a thread, whether we're going to change all the threads or one of the threads. We just clip it off, run it out. Because on the baby locks, it's easy enough to just well, completely rethread. And even on, on anybody, any serger, you know, pulling the thread through versus letting it be driven through could could screw with your tension a little okay, bit. Okay. Yeah. yeah. All right. I yeah. see what I see what you're talking about. So yeah. yeah, running it like through the process of the machine. Right. I see what I you're saying. I think you're better off. Okay. So uh you're gonna unthread it, you're gonna unplug it, you're gonna uh-huh. turn it off. And then this might be a good idea since the serger can so infest your environment with lint to like move it. <laughs> To a second location. Uh, I've taken mine outside before. <laughs> okay. <laughs> like after I've done a big, like, uh-huh. especially like sewing, um, stretch, velvet costumes where I made like yeah. 40. Yeah. You know, and, and believe me, I was sucking stuff out of that the whole time anyway, but it was still just so dirty. Yeah. So you could even like put out whatever, like some newsprint or some whatever right. didn't put your serger on it like if we put it on our cutting table we put it on our cutting table usually yeah we could we could put something under it even to catch the crap right because not only because it might be easier you know, that to work crap there, you sew with that's right not because it's easier and there's more room or anything but like you need to clean your serger table your serger table will be dirty too like wherever the wall behind well, it could be <laughs> dirty okay well <laughs> and and we have serger tables specifically and they have like little nooks and crannies yes. in them like you know to hold things and it they, they're just dirty and then your best friend is going to be i'd say you know in the sewing machine i said sometimes i start off with the damp right cleaner cloth right. And not on the serger. I always start with the vacuum. There's yeah, always enough. I loose always start stuff. brushing. Yes. I, usually I brush and then I start getting out the vacuum. Yeah. And, um, and like I said, I kind of I I constantly brush the serger. Yes. I will sit down to use the serger and brush it out and brush it out before I use it because it's it's there. That that stuff is there. So vacuum your furniture that you've cleared of your serger. Okay, but then go right. over to your serger and vacuum your and serger. And then now <laughs> your floor is going to be dirty. Yes. So. Sweep our floor, vacuum and your floor. And the front of whatever you're wearing will be dirty. That's right. Yeah. We yeah. really use our sergers everybody. So you can vacuum out, you can when I say vacuum out, first you can vacuum 
like the front of your serger, just right. the, the outer And when covers. we say vacuum, we like mm -hmm. the small attachments, okay, kit, and it hooks on to your regular vacuum. A small vacuum, you may be, you may see some place that is sold to, cl you know, clean a computer or a sewing machine, or they'll say your small electronics. It's not something we really endorse. They are not powerful enough for this, okay? We like We this. like the attachments, that small attachments that go to your large machine. And they'll fit on almost, I've never had a vacuum that they didn't fit on. They have they have different little fittings yeah. to go on different size hoses. And we've used them on a shop, shop back and on like our regular, um, you know, household vacuum. And then also you can just have the hose of your vacuum there Almost like a catching. little yeah. Yeah, catcher. It's like a it's like this little sucker over the side catching all the stuff. Now something that's cool about most sergers is they open up yeah. rather a lot. Right. Most of them right. because the threading area is so yes. exposed so that yes. you can thread. So after you've kind of done the outside of the machine, and it's really important to do that because there's dust there. I've had people, that little clip that we were talking about that yes. starts off the threading process, I've had people get enough stuff. Actually, I just took a piece of thread trash out of ours um, the other day. There was like a little yeah. bit of gray thread, and I was right. still on the pink thread. So, right. you know, it was, um, I was like, okay, well, we've got, you know, this little bit of thread trash in here. If if there's something in the way of one of those things that's supposed to keep tension on your thread, it might not keep the tension. Right, you probably keep... will lose tension. So you can open those covers. That was one of the selling points between two of the baby lock sergers at one time, I right. remember. Right, and now they all open, don't they? I don't think the Imagine opens in the same way. Oh, really? The, the side. The side arm doesn't I, move. Yeah, yeah, I guess I could be wrong, but on the left side of the machine, it doesn't Yeah, I open. guess I don't know that either. I guess it's been a while since I really guess sewn we, on it. Guess we're going to go to baby lock training in June, huh? Yep. Guess we'll yeah, find guess out. We're going to learn. We're going to huh? find out how everything opens. You know what? We should take movies. I'm so excited. Maybe we'll about take that. movies of every single machine. I'm so excited. I think we should like do you pretend you're Vanna White and show off all the machines and, and I'll take Pat movies. Sajak? Yeah, like I'll be Vanna Pat. and. Yeah. No, well, sorry. He is, so, <laughs> he is so. I don't like him. <laughs> he is. You know what? I think he's patronizing. You I don't can like tell him. that he's maybe not. Super happy to. I don't know. He seems kind of mean, doesn't he? I hate to. I don't know, Pat, personally, if any of you I do. I think Vanna Let tolerates him. Let me know. I now, can't believe we're having this okay, discussion. But anyway. Apparently, though, when they changed from turning the letters to the buttons, yeah. they wanted to get rid of Vanna, and he said no. He, like. He, oh, you need her. He, yeah. He, he said. No, but he said, yeah, I'm they not going to do the show. Right. I'm not going to do the show without her. So I was like, oh, that's cool. Well, yeah, it is. Vanna also has her own line of yarn. Do you know yeah. that? Yeah, yeah she okay. knits. She knits and crochets a lot. Moving on. She's also, she's also like, she likes to cook. Like, she doesn't just turn letters. Yeah. Okay. No, she, okay. You can use yarn in your serger. Back to sergers. <laughs> Cleaning the outside of your serger, though, even, it, like, we talk about, we're going to talk about what you should and should not take apart, you know. Right. Just cleaning the outside of your serger is going to do wonders. Yes. Where Now, now you can open up that little door and just stick that vacuum in there and start sucking, and you'll be surprised. You can also turn your, okay, I will... We, we, I will say this with caution. Okay. You can turn it upside down and shake it, because I've done that, too. Don't drop it. Don't drop it. <laughs> Make sure there's nothing that's going to fall off of it. That's right. You know, every there's so many surgeries I can't, like, you know. Oh, and, sure. And and people have got some old surgeries out there, because they're mechanical, and there's not a lot that can go wrong with them. They last for, like, ever if I you mean, take care of them. That's why when I know the baby locks are on the higher end of the expense spectrum. Right. But if If Kay, you buy one, you never have to buy yeah, another Kay, one. Kay, <laughs> I'm talking to you. You know, she. I'll just say, Kay was in the group. She said, I've got, I think she was like, I got $300 or $350 or something like that. I was like, I'd just save it. And, and, and I don't I don't know if she's a saver. I don't know if she's a spender or what. But I was like, Get I yourself would. a coffee can and just start putting that money in that's it. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Have that surgery fund because, man, it's just it could last you forever. For freaking ever. That's it. It's one of the best investments. It really is. So all of you people out there who, you know, we're all like, oh, don't fed old and, machines. And you're going to be sewing some knits, I guarantee you, That's, sometime, somewhere, oh, well, somehow. She, she does. Right. And so if you, yeah, anyway, okay, okay. And okay. they're all mechanical. <laughs> they're very serviceable. Yay. All right. Where you're going to get a lot of crap out of your serger <laughs> is near the blade. Right. Cleaning out that blade area is so important. So if you take, take your needle out. Yes. Take your presser foot off. Yes. 
Like we said in the sewing machine episode, you can clean your, your pretzel foot. Your throat plate. Take your throat plate. Is what you say? Okay, you say I don't. Plate. No, I don't take the throat plate off the I baby do. log. I don't tell other people to take the throat oh. plate off the baby log. Oh, I take it off. <laughs> Sorry. I take it off. I don't tell other. I people probably to do take it. a lot of stuff off that I'm not supposed yeah, to. Yeah, there's something else you do that I've. I'm I know. Kind of. You've never debating. seen. I know you haven't done it, but what? I. Oh, you do oh. it. <laughs> you do do it. I've done oh, it. Okay. okay, there's some, but I don't know if we should tell other people to do it. Anyway. On the baby locks, the way the throat plate comes off, I think it's kind of difficult to put back on. Oh. And I think you can oh. clean it. Oh. I don't think easily. it's difficult. I've seen people really struggle with it. Okay. And it's because of a delicate stitch finger yes. that needs to be placed. Yeah, in you want to make area. sure the stitch finger is not hurt. But yes. if that side thing opens up, I think you can get to it good enough. Yes. Okay. So that's where okay, we talk about the little brush that we're not super impressed with, that little itty bitty stiff right. plastic brush. Or if you have a toothbrush, this the can The brush be that comes with your machine is what she's talking about. A lot of times it will come with your machine. Um or even the brush that comes with your machine has the pokey thing on it, that can be really helpful cleaning out that throat plate. Mm -hmm. Okay. The speed dogs. Clean your presser foot, too. That presser foot that you took off. Right. You know, uh, vacuum it a little bit with your little vacuum and then do it with your... Alcohol swab or whatever. Or something like that. And get up in there, up above the needle of the serger, mm -hmm. too. So if you can open that up, that's great. So... When you after you vacuum the outside of your surger and everything, and you're kind of got the big lint clumps away, we recommend spraying a paper towel with a cleaner, some kind of surface mm -hmm. cleaner, like a, a window cleaner or something like that, and going over the machine. So this will help to get even finer particles. Clean your machine now. Your machine also might have suction cups on the bottom. The feet, yes. a lot of times, are actually suction cups. And boy, when I would first get a baby lock serger out of the box, it I'd would put it on the down table. And you could not get it up. Yep. And then I would try to put the serger back in the box for somebody, <laughs> and I'd lift up the table. Like at the, you know, <laughs> these big heavy tables. It's about, oh, and I, I would say to the person, this is the last time this is going to happen because <laughs> you're going to go home and use this. And then there's going to be all this lint under right. your feet. So cleaning those is very, right. very important. Um, so we've kind of touched on, you know, some surface things here. Let's take a little break, and maybe we'll discuss whether or not we should share your special little thing you do. Okay. Hey, ZD. Wouldn't it be cool if everyone who listened to this podcast could learn how to make perfectly fitting leggings directly from you, the leggings expert? Well, yes, Mal. That's why we produce the Made to Measure Leggings class. I teach anyone, no matter their age, ability, or gender, to make perfectly fitting leggings based on their measurements. And if someone is feeling particularly generous, they can make leggings for anyone who they can get to stand still long enough to measure. You, yes you, can get immediate access to all the videos and course materials in the Made to Measure Leggings class by going to SewHere.com slash leggings. This online class allows you to complete the process at your own pace, and you own it forever, so you can rewatch it as many times as you need. Stop struggling with the leggings that roll down or sag in the wrong places. I'll be your guide as you create leggings that are made especially for you. No matter what your equipment or skill level, ZD covers everything from measuring, drafting, cutting, and construction on a sewing machine or serger in this class. Go to SewHere.com slash leggings and get started today. Sewing out loud. Okay, we're going to... Use some very careful wording here, just like in our sewing machine Listen episode. to this carefully. That's right. There may be places on your serger where the casing comes off and goes back on very easily. And more than likely, it will be if you turn the serger, say, on its back. Uh-huh. Okay, now make sure when you, tur when you lay the serger on its back that you're not putting force on something. Yes. Like, you know, a spool holder or, or whatever. And if you are, you can roll up a towel and put it under there, you know, mm -hmm. make it like, you know, a support. Right. Right, a soft support so that you can, like, visualize your serger from the bottom up. That's right. So always make those spool pins and everything, they are 
They'll they're, snap right off. They're just waiting for you to screw yeah, up. Yeah, they're okay? just asking they're for just, it. Yeah, they're just asking for you to, um, you know, bump something or whatever. Right. And, uh, or bend the, the telescoping rod can be bent. That's right. There's a lot of things that can happen there. That's right. So make sure that that's not happening. But sometimes that bottom will come off and... And Don't do anything else but vacuum this out. Right. Now, how this comes off is usually there's some screws. Sometimes they go through the feet. Sometimes they're on the side. I have, in rare instances, seen some, and these were on metal sergers, so this, these were some old yeah. sergers that sort of, like, popped off. Yeah. Okay, you know, they, they were, like, friction fit. Mm -hmm. um, so you'll open that up, and you'll see, like, uh, the mechanisms if it's a baby lock self-threader you're going to see a whole lot of mecha like yeah. mechanism okay if it's a simple mechanical surgery without a uh, self-threading system it will be more um sim sim taking, simple 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 ta taking the bottom out of your surgery really should just be so that you let lint fall out right almost i would only vacuum Yep. You may see some grease in there and everything. This yeah. is a special kind of grease. Do not touch it. Do not wipe it off. Do not okay? touch it. Do not Do wipe not it take off. it off. Um, <laughs> the other thing that will happen is the plate that you have taken off the bottom may be just coated with lint and grease. Yep. And that you want to wipe off. Yeah, so that if you took off if this the bottom of your surgery, if you took that off, you can clean that out with, you know, we've talked right. about removing oil with alcohol, um, mm -hmm. maybe with a little bit of something like a goo right. gone, and then going back right. with the It will be like someone cleaner. tried to tar and feather sometimes. Right. So it will be that full of lint. But just in case they haven't listened to the sewing machine episode, you would not recommend acetone. No. Right? Okay. No so let's, acetone. Let's go I over just that again. keep acetone away from your sewing machine. I keep acetone away from my sewing space in general. Yes. Okay? I just do. Um, now, I have actually taken mine to the bathroom sink because we have a bathroom in our studio, right? Mm -hmm. Because it was plastic. It actually, like, washed it with soap. Yeah. You know. Um, now, disclaimer here. Mallory and I have taken, you know, tech courses. Right. We know how to open and close machines. We have, like, certificates that say, you are now, have completed, blah, 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 technical course. Okay? So, um if you're hesitant to do this, if you do not want to do it, I wouldn't do it. That's right. Um, um, there, There's no reason to risk, and you're not expected to do this. That's right. So, you know, you should be getting your machine cleaned at least once a year. Uh, but getting that stuff off of the outside, let's talk a little bit about the spool pins. Well, and I want, oh, I, but I want to talk about this lint thing. Okay. This is why it's so important to remove the lint from your machine. Now, if you keep the lint away... Like, periodically, I'm, I'm not talking about when you decide to clean. I'm just talking about use. Yeah. You sit down, you use it, you're like, oh, look at all this lint, and pull that sucker out. You can also take your pickups or your tweezers or whatever you might call them or your hemostats and pull lint out sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> okay? Because there'll be wads of stuff down in there. Pull it out. Get rid of it so it doesn't go deep in the machine. An ounce of prevention, right? Right. Because what happens when that, what lint does, and I actually said this in the sewing machine episode also of cleaning your sewing machine, is lint will draw the oil away from the mechanism that needs it. So, you know, it needs that oil. And sergers are metal against metal against metal against metal, working and working and, you know, chugging along. So it needs that oil and grease. And I will say, we talked about oiling in the sewing machine episode. Sergers most often will take specialized forms of lubrication right. that you might not have. So like ZD said, I, I had somebody one time, you know, take apart their surgery and say, oh, there's just so much. I'm just so worried about all this oil in here. And it's, no, it is supposed to be there. It, it, it's not, and it's not oil. It's actually grease. Yeah, okay. So there you go. Yeah. if you put oil on it, you might be, you might, you know, it, it has to be a specific type of grease. Yeah, so you need to be careful there. In fact, do you, do you just, um, after cleaning the surgery, put a, swipe some oil onto the needle bar? I do. I do the needle That's bar. That's all I do. Yeah. Yeah. That, now. You will notice in baby lock self threaders, and I believe yeah. even Juki, I think, may have this too. But baby lock, of course, has a little oil can with, you know, the universal don't do it here thing. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's the circle with the cross that says, don't oil these ports. And they're the thread ports. Right. 
Yes. Oh God. You okay. know, we never had anybody do that. I, or I don't know. Yeah, we have. Oh, I didn't. I didn't. I want to talk that. about those thread ports a little bit too. Oh, okay. Well, I want to say something. I, we're being so polite. We're being so yeah. considerate. I want to say about that grease, about that um, grease in the in the gears and everything that's that's uh, happened in the surgeries. The only time we've had someone have a big problem with their serger running. We knew this lady pretty well. Uh, she bought a serger from us. She had like an embroidery business. Mm -hmm. And then she came to, she said, I need to come to class to learn how to use this thing. It's just been in the bottom of my closet for, right. and it was like six, four it was years. A no, it was like six or eight years. Uh, I couldn't it, figure okay. it out. Yeah, yeah. It was a long time. And I said, okay. So she comes and she plugs the machine in and it won't go. Yeah. It was frozen. And we took it to the back and we took it apart and out came I don't know, hundreds of ladybugs. Yes, this is very true. And all of the oil had settled. Right. There was no oil on any of the moving parts anymore. It had not been, it had all right. just All of the grease just had just come sunken down. down. It had not been moved through. So Yeah, I don't know how hot it got. We do, I don't really know. But, you know, she said, has not been have touched. Have not touched it, yeah. You know, since I put it there. And actually, we had one other person that happened to, and it was the same thing. She said it had been four years. Okay. But the same exact thing, it had frozen in place because it had not been used. So what it had, this is like if you put a car engine, say. Uh-huh. So people will say, oh, nobody's driven this car for three years. It's been sitting in the garage. <laughs> it means it's going to have a whole bunch of problems. Okay, the oil will have come down off of everything in the engine, like the right. pistons. Okay, so they're no longer lubricated. They call the tires will go square or right. flat. You know, they'll be flat on one side. And most of the rubber hoses and everything will have disintegrated. That's right. So because something sits and doesn't get used does not mean it's in tip-top condition. And we would have a a lot of people come in and say this, especially if they didn't know anything about um, sewing or something. It would be somebody's family, you know, grandma died and her sewing machine was found in the closet. And they're like, well, we know she hasn't used it for three years because she's been in a nursing home. And I'm like, okay, <laughs> it's not a selling point. Right. Yeah, you know, it, it's, it's, a, it's a be careful point. So know this about any sewing machine that you might use, sewing machine, surgery, or whatever. If it has not been touched, if it's been sitting still, if it's been dormant, it may need servicing first right. before you do anything. So so keeping it moving and keeping it clean are going to really help you out. Oh, now, what were you going to say? Okay, so I want to talk about thread, thread ports. Thread ports, okay. Because if I ever hear a complaint about a baby lock, and it's usually from someone who doesn't have one or someone who can't doesn't have the um, ability I, you know, I hear to sell more, them. I hear more about people who don't actually have one. Usually, like, I don't or, have a or it's lock, a dealer but... <laughs> that's not selling them, right? Yeah. They'll say, I hear that threading mechanism is finicky. Yeah. I'm calling bullshit, okay? <laughs> oh, great. Just Our How to Clean Your Surger episode <laughs> is explicit now. <laughs> okay, I could say I'm calling BS, and maybe that goes, this is not true. I have sewn on baby lock sergers since be the beginning of serger time, over tw over 25 years, okay? I was there when the first self-threading machine came out, and they had they had this— The Basset Hound with They his had the ears. Basset Hound with his ears flowing while you um, threaded your, your sewing machine. It was the cutest ad. I wish they'd bring it back. And pe but people will say these thread ports get, you know, gunked up, whatever, what, you know, but it's finicky. I've never had a problem. I have come across an issue once when I was, and I was, I myself was so, um, sewing again like a velour. Uh -huh. So it was a nappy fabric and it was in costume. So I was making like, you know, many yes, things, tens of them, whatever, right. right? And all of a sudden, I could hear my mechanism, I could hear my little air going through and it wasn't taking my thread uh -huh. right well what had happened is i had gotten so much lint in this one port right right and the other port was fine mm -hmm. everything else about it was fine so what i did is i took my um threading wire my threading wire that comes with the machine that I give specific instructions on the threading wire when I deliver a machine. It's all about how you really don't have to use it. Right. 
in except uh, <laughs> except in this particular instance. So I felt like I might have some lint in there. Uh huh. So I took this threading wire and I put it in, and then I attached to it my number eight pearl cotton. Oh, okay. And pulled it through. Uh huh. Which reamed out yeah. the lumen of that threader because that's what they are. They're tubular threaders. Yeah. So it went through the tube and it cleaned it. Yeah. Okay. So this this was the first time we'd ever had this happen and it was to me. Mm-hmm. Well, because I But sewed, of course it happened to Zini. Well yeah. <laughs> and it happened because I sew so many things with so much lint. And that's another reason to keep this lint off of your machine. That's right. right. So that you don't, you know, okay. Just ran that through once. It was perfect. That was the machine that I sewed on for 11 years that is still on its third owner. And now it's 20 years, you know, 20 something years old. It was an Imagine. Still is an Imagine, actually. But, um, and it was funny because Terry was servicing one, oh, like, I'd say four or five months later. And he goes, I don't get this. He goes, I know this is working. I can't get a thread to go through. And I go, ha ha. I know what to do. Yeah. So then when, you know. We went back to Baby Lock. I told Doug about my uh-huh. experience, and so now that's part of Baby Lock's how to clean your port if you need to. Well, and one yeah. time somebody brought in a machine and had that issue, and I right. knew from you teaching right. me. And actually, I didn't put the pearl cotton in the end. I ran the threading wire through, and it the, the that the poked little it out. Plug went boop, and yep. it, it got it out of the loop. Well, and this also this happens when people. Right, back their thread That's out. That's right. Don't back your thread out. Because especially on a serger, everybody, <laughs> when you back your thread out, you're backing it out through the lintiest part of your machine, okay? Yeah. And pulling it back through your tension disc or your threading port and all that. So it is even more important on a serger maybe than a sewing machine to pull, you know, away from all your mechanisms. So take it out of the needle and Open your tension disc and pull it through, or run it through, or like run a it through, off. like we talked yeah. about at the beginning. That's right. But um, yeah, you know, if you back it up, you're going to pull stuff into your machine. There's another thing you can do um, if you. I haven't really found the need to do this on our serger, just because we. I think we vacuum, you know. Uh, but if you have those exposed tension discs, you can set them to zero, and you can run like. Credit index card, card non waxed uh, dental, dental floss. floss, and you can see if you've got anything in there. Sometimes you can even like shine a light in there if you can't get to them easily. But then, if you run those cards through, and you also put some kind of you brush it or you put right. the brushy vacuum attachment on there, it will clean yes. out those tension discs, and you'll make sure that you're getting the appropriate type right. of tension when you are you know, setting the tensions right. for your surgery. So if you've got something in there, that that can be an issue. Um, and then, yeah, I think that, oh, I wanted to talk about the spool holders and things uh-huh. like that. If you have spools of thread that have ever had a sticker on them or anything like that, this could be applicable to the sewing machine episode, which we didn't mention it there. But your spool holders and the platform that your spools are on, that all needs to be cleaned pretty regularly, too. You know, you don't want thread trash getting incorporated into your thread and all that. Now, I know that, I mean, ideally, you should actually take those stickers off the end of your yes, spool. Yes, you should. But it keeps them labeled. Now, like on um, my uh, our construction thread on the big spools, they don't even have it. Yeah. yeah, so it keeps it. But you will get gunky stuff on your 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 spool pen. So again, alcohol will usually clean that right off. Yeah, the sulky the sulky threads they're great because the labels have, like have a hole in them. See that? Right. But yeah, but right. the sulky ones are appropriate. Right. right. So um, that's kind of nice. But yes, so I I think that pretty much covers it. The search is a little more straightforward than the sewing machine. Go ahead. I have one more thing to say, and we left this off of the sewing machine clean or maintenance or taking care of or whatever. Another thing is, and this this is not so true today on the brand new, new plastic machines, the most recent ones, but on ones that are a little bit older is UV light or sunlight or any sort of sunlight, actually, hitting the machine a lot. So yeah. if it's by a um, window, you really need to cover it up. And all plastic uh 
will degrade. Yes. Okay, so even the new stuff that doesn't look like it's discoloring or anything like that, it still does. And you need to keep that machine covered with something that blocks the light. So a lot of people have like a plastic cover that comes with it. Mm-hmm. You're, you're, you'd be better off putting a blanket over it. Right. Where the sun did not penetrate. Um, so you can cover it. That's another thing, especially with the sergers, with the open disc in front, uh, uh-huh. tension disc, is to keep it covered when you're not using it. Um, it's a good idea. Sometimes we cover, sometimes we don't. When we really clean up our sewing machines, we, we, we're we just using them all the time. We use our machines a lot. Right. Um, we use them every day. But it can be good if you have an open – what if you have an open disc surgery and you're using, like, your other surger and right. you kick it right. up Right, lint. right, yeah, it, right. And you just yeah. make – you know, when you're rotary cutting, you're making lint. That's right. That's right. Um, quilters make a lot of lint because they cut a lot. They cut a lot of little yeah. pieces. Yes. 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 So, you know, don't hesitate. A lot of people like to make a cover for the machine, and that's nice too. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, so make one that you feel is blocking out the light. Yeah, make sure it's opaque. All right. Well, I, I love that. Um, and actually, that is a question. If you do come across a used serger, sometimes that discolored plastic actually isn't an indication that it's like, bad right and sometimes the machine will look like it's almost two colors yeah like maybe um part of the machine will look a little bit more yellow Uh and the other part of the machine is like beige or something or white and it usually you know you might tap on it see if it's brittle or something it could be brittle we had customers who we knew kept their machines you know in in good places right. and uh and they still discover and got them serviced right. and all that and you know so if we resold that machine if it was a trade-in or something you know that was thing that we brought up so all right well make sure to clean out your searches everybody it's just a good idea to do it you can find us on instagram we are at so here and you can email me at mallory at so here.com so long and so happy thanks for listening to sewing out loud For even more expert sewing advice, visit SewHere.com.